numerous races invaded the Blue Star, and Dragon Kingdom mobilized a hundred million troops overnight. While everyone eagerly enlisted and rushed to the battlefield to slay the enemy, I chose to stay behind in logistics as a common soldier. Everyone mocked me as a coward afraid of death, and my superior looked puzzled as he asked me why I chose to retreat. Facing their queries, I did not offer much explanation. Instead, I left the recruitment scene amid everyone's insults. Little did they know, I had already awakened five major talent skills. The ability to tame exotic beasts, elemental skills to harness ice, fire, wind, and thunder, a demonic ability that grows stronger with more killing, an infinitely stacking formation ability, the ability to summon armies of the undead. As long as I can level up these five abilities to their max, I can surely repel the attack of a million exotic races. But if I were to go to the battlefield now, I would end my talents prematurely like in my previous life. Originally, in the year 2690, demonic creatures from numerous races descended upon Earth. At first, humans could counter the monsters with firearms, but as more high-level monsters joined, ordinary humans were completely overpowered. The casualties in the Dragon Kingdom's army alone reached 10 million. However, as time passed, humans awakened numerous powerful superhumans. With their help, the invasion of the numerous races slowed down. At this moment, in Karma City on the border, an officer passionately declared from the stage, behind me is the list of those who died in battle last month. They were our friends, our family and siblings, and the heroes of our Karma City and the entire Dragon Kingdom. Now, as the battle against the demonic creatures of numerous races is about to begin. As a border city, we in Karma City have no way out. Now that the Eastern Alliance is about to rally a million ability users to counterattack the numerous races, what should our Karma City reserves do? Protect our homes and country, defend our lands and rivers. Instantly, the crowd shouted in unison, enlist. We want to sign up to enlist. We want to go to the front lines and kill the enemy, kill the exotic races, tear them apart, and protect our dragon kingdom. The people's desire to enlist reached its peak, but just as everyone was eagerly signing up, a boy requested to stay behind in logistics. As soon as he said this, the officer was taken aback, as he never expected someone to willingly choose to be a coward under these circumstances. His classmates beside him angrily called him trash, pointing out that logistics was filled with the old, sick, and women and children. Immediately, the officer also spoke up. The numerous races are slaughtering our people. You are healthy and excellent in performance, yet you choose to retreat from serving your country. Do you live up to the nation's cultivation of you? The boy, named Nan Zing, said, Sorry, officer, I have my own choices. At this point, his classmates began to jeer, but they were interrupted by a middle-aged man standing nearby. The speaker was a veteran general who had lost his left arm. Young man, I respect your choice. Enlistment is not compulsory. It depends on personal will. The old general then sighed. It's a pity for such a promising young person. Just take your form and leave. Amid everyone's insults, he slowly left. The next day, the enlistees, supported by tanks and airplanes, began to move towards the front lines. Carrying a conviction of victory and full of fervor, they aimed to protect their homes and defend their land. Meanwhile, Nan Zing could only stand secretly behind the crowd, and then he sighed softly. His refusal to enlist had made him a hot topic online, but Nan Zing did not respond to it. Indeed, they are all heroes, but this battle is surely a suicidal charge, with no return. Humanity, with its million-strong army, still underestimated the power of the numerous races. In his previous life, he had rushed to the front lines early to fight and join the battle headquarters, becoming a brilliant commander. As humans were steadily defeated, he used his life to research and develop up five talents, which he then placed within himself. But before he could fully level up all his talents, humanity was defeated. Even though he alone killed all the monsters at the scene, he ultimately lost to the numerous races supreme strongest. Unwilling to accept this, if he could have fully leveled up his talents earlier, he would have had the power to protect all of humanity. Perhaps Nan Zing's obsession touched the heavens, and he was reborn, miraculously returning to the time before he enlisted. And the talent tree he had created with his life also appeared. The beast taming tree allowed for mass taming of beasts. The elemental tree could condense water and fire. The Shura tree amplified his own frenzy the more enemies he killed, and the tactical tree could set various formations with immense power. Although cultivating these five talents requires a massive amount of source stones and time, mastering all five to their extremes can turn the tide and lead humanity to defeat the invasion of the numerous races. But if he were to go to the battlefield now, he wouldn't kill many monsters and might even waste his talents or lose his life. The best place to obtain source stones is the trial grounds, which are filled with numerous mutant beasts. Through trials, one can continuously acquire source stones to enhance one's talents. Currently, only the elderly, weak, sick, and disabled are working in logistics, preparing various supplies for the frontline soldiers. At this moment, a girl with a crutch sighed, it would be good if I hadn't been injured. Nan Zing suddenly approached and asked, I am here to train at the trial grounds, and I can help you deal with the mutant beasts. The girl immediately responded, that would be really great, as we are struggling to find help. Let me take you to change your clothes first. But Andy 
Zhan on the side was very puzzled. Why would a young person come to the trial grounds? Just then, it seemed she thought of something and quickly started searching for her phone in her pocket. Isn't he Nan Ziying, the one who refused to go to the front line that's all over the trending searches? Seeing this, Auntie Lee was also confused. He refused to go to the front line, so why come here to train? Maybe he wants to compensate for the guilt of living safely in logistics. The girl took out an alloy knife for handling the mutant beasts. You have to be very careful. Nan Ziying expressed his thanks, glanced at the alloy knife he hadn't used for a long time, and then walked alone into the trial grounds. Watching his departing figure, the girl thought, although he doesn't talk much, he is quite handsome. Auntie Zhang immediately stepped forward to remind her, don't be foolish, no matter how handsome he is, he's still a coward. He is that Nan Ziying who dares not go to the front line. Hearing the discussion behind him, Nan Ziying paid no attention and walked into the trial room without looking back. As he finished selecting the difficulty for his trial, alarms suddenly sounded around him. The trial has begun, please prepare yourself. Then, numerous monsters burst out of cages nearby, charging at him from all directions. But at this moment, he was not panicked at all. Since heaven has given me a second life, I must give it my all in this one. So, the next step was to start with the beast tamer talent. Since the invasion of the numerous races, Earth's creatures had also mutated. Fortunately, with the experience from my previous life, handling these basic umbrella bird monsters is quite straightforward. After killing a few umbrella birds, a shimmering golden egg suddenly appeared. With this golden egg, I could add a tamed mutant beast to my collection. However, my current body is still too weak, so I can't fight for long periods. But if I can hit their vital parts with each attack, dealing with these mutant beasts for a short duration shouldn't be a problem. Thus, I swung my longsword without hesitation. Although they are just some low-level mutant beasts, they can be quite troublesome when they gather. Let's deal with these above first. After 10 minutes of fierce fighting, I finally increased the number of tameable beasts to 5. As expected, the efficiency has greatly improved. Just then, a loud bird call sounded beside me. Turning around, I saw a huge umbrella bird, the leader of the umbrella birds, the umbrella bird emperor. Given my current physical condition, it is indeed difficult to confront it directly, so I must be smart and not forceful, aiming for a critical hit, a killing blow with each strike. As my longsword struck the umbrella bird emperor with a clang, this guy was much harder than in my previous life. Since that's the case, let's do it one more time. At this moment in the trial hall, the two aunties looked doubtful. Suddenly, the girl stepped forward and asked, it's lunchtime already, why haven't you left? Auntie Zhang gestured to little Lu, don't worry about it, I want to see how long that Nan guy can keep up his act inside. Other kids are out on the front lines fighting, and this guy is still muddling through here. If he dares to run away later, I'll grab him with a capture move. However, Little Lu remarked, an A-level trial doesn't seem much easier than the front line. As they were discussing, the announcement of the end of the A-level trial came over the loudspeaker. Andy Zhang smirked, that guy must not be able to take it, and is about to run away. Let's go and catch him now. But as she turned around, she seemed to bump into something. Regaining her composure, Andy Zhang was stunned because the Nan Ziying they thought was weak and cowardly was now covered in scars. Even his clothes were torn beyond recognition, his face smeared with what was either monster blood or his own. Muddling through like this, did you actually pass the A-level trial? Nan Ziying calmly replied, yes, I passed. I took care of all the monsters on the first level. The bodies of those demons will need your attention. I need to go and clean up now. With that, he turned and left without looking back. The three who had entered the trial grounds were shocked. My god, all these monster corpses. He actually really passed the A-level trial. Nan Ziying went home and started taking a shower. Looking at the beast tamer talent tree panel, he couldn't help but ponder. To upgrade to level 3, just staying on the first floor of the trial tower won't cut it. The front lines have already been breached by the numerous races to the 7th and 8th defense layers, and it probably won't be long before they break through to Karma City. I don't have much time to cultivate, I must quickly max out my talent levels. Meanwhile, the aunties were dealing with the corpses of the exotic beasts. That guy really went all out. Didn't you say he was a coward? Few people have passed the A-level trial before. Hearing this, Auntie Zhang scoffed. He's just harming himself so he can find an excuse to lie around at home. But as soon as she finished speaking, Nan Ziying appeared in front of them again. What are you doing back here? We don't need you here. We've already finished the work on the first level, Auntie Zhang said. Nan Ziying calmly stated, I'm not here to help you with the bodies. I'm going to the second level to continue the trials. At this, Auntie Zhang exclaimed in shock, You're going to the second level with those severe injuries? What are you trying to prove? Little Lu also advised him, You should heal up before going on. The second level is filled with large mutant beasts. Thank you for your concern, but there's no need to worry about me. With that, Nan Ziying headed towards the second level of the trial tower. Watching this, Auntie Zhang was dumbfounded. If he's capable of this, why doesn't he go to the front line? What's he trying to prove by staying here? But Nan Ziying was not in the mood to pay attention to their accusations, as he was about to face large mutant beasts far stronger than those on the first level. The second level indeed felt much more oppressive than the first. Suddenly, a huge mutant bull charged at him, sending him flying with its impact. Although he used the force of the impact to mitigate some of the blood,
blow. The intense pain reminded him, this won't be as easy as the first level. At that moment, the bull snorted at him a few times. It seemed to mock him for daring to challenge them alone. Immediately, Nan Ziying's temper flared up. Really think I'm easy to bully? Nan Ziying never fought a battle he wasn't sure of winning. As more mutant bulls charged at him, he quickly leaped up and thrust his sword through the head of one, then slashed at the wound with his sword blade. Instantly, there was a plop sound as the bull spewed a mouthful of old blood and dropped dead on the spot. Seeing the situation turn dire, the other mutant bulls looked terrified, not expecting this human to be so fierce. At that moment, he extracted the source stone from inside the bull, thinking, since these are all second level mutant beasts, why not just tame them and kill them off right after? So, he immediately activated his beast taming talent, and as a burst of red light appeared in his hands, the bull brothers in the arena felt like they had been struck by lightning, instantly subdued by the aura, and unable to get up. Nan Ziying then walked over to one of the trembling bulls, and said coldly, not so arrogant now, are you? Well, now you'll all become my experience points. Quickly, three days passed, and the trial ground was now filled with the corpses of monsters I had killed, overwhelming the antis who could barely keep up. After these days of effort, my tameable beast level had also risen to level 6. In just three days, I had slain over 10,000 mutant beasts, proving once again that the fastest leveling speed is indeed in the trial grounds. However, it's time to go hunting in the wild next. After all, the wild mutant beasts are not comparable to these domesticated poultry. Even ability users with firearms dare not guarantee their safety against these beasts. Yet, taming them is a key step in my strategy to combat the invasion of the numerous races, and it's time to start my own plan. At that moment, the manager asked, Mr. Nan, do you wish to continue the challenge? For the sake of our soldiers at the front, we can work overtime every day. But Nan Ziing responded, I need to leave early today, that's enough for today. Saying this, he walked towards the main entrance. Andy Zhang couldn't help but comment, see, I knew this kid couldn't last a few days. But before she could finish, a nearby uncle jumped in, shut your mouth. If it weren't for him, how could we have completed our tasks so quickly? I think the young man is doing quite well. However, Nan Ziying paid no mind to others' criticisms, as he had more important things to attend to. At that moment, Little Lu approached with a blushing face. Mr. Nan, you have been performing very well lately, and you have been working hard. We'll take care of the rest. Hearing a girl's voice, Nan Ziying quickly turned around. Thank you for your recognition. This is what I should do. Okay, Mr. Nan, then I won't disturb you anymore. Meanwhile, several transport vehicles entered Karma City, carrying wounded soldiers from the front line. At this moment, the wounded were being hurriedly taken to the hospital. Nan Ziying was puzzled by this. How come there are so many wounded already? It seems that the situation at the front line is not optimistic. Just then, a woman suddenly pointed to the sky and said, Look, it turned out that two rockets were speeding towards the front line. Nan Ziying immediately thought this was not good, realizing the situation at the front line was far more complicated than he had imagined. Otherwise, they wouldn't have called for rear artillery support so soon. The day when the defense lines would completely collapse wasn't far off. He needed to speed up his talent upgrades. At this moment, several transport vehicles suddenly stopped in the wilderness. Upon getting out, it turned out that the cars had broken down, so they urgently needed repairs. Then, a blonde girl suggested, let's just leave the cars here for now. There are lots of mutant wolves around. We can come back tomorrow. But just then, a dark figure appeared in the distance. Before anyone could react, the figure swiftly passed by the convoy. The blonde girl was puzzled. Who is that? Heading out of the city alone at night. So, she shouted out the car window. There are mutant giant wolves ahead. It's very dangerous. Indeed, the figure was Nan Ziying, who was preparing to head into the wilderness. A short-haired girl reminded, the wounded in the city are waiting for these medicines. We should hurry and get the medicine back. Reluctantly, the blonde girl prepared to drive off. But just then, a scream came from outside the vehicle, and the driver outside was the one who had died. Forget about it. Let's go. There's a steel giant wolf behind us. But by then it was too late to leave, as the convoy was already surrounded by steel giant wolves. The short-haired girl picked up a machine gun and started firing at the giant wolves. The sounds of the fight quickly drew Nan Ziying's attention. The medical team from Karma City is under attack. But just as he was about to turn back to help, Nan Ziying felt he had to make a choice, continue forward to accelerate his talent enhancement, or go back and rescue those trapped. A large pack of wolves appeared behind him, which actually saved him a lot of effort. He had been planning to seek them out, but they had come to him instead. As the concentration of spiritual energy increased, it was clear that these beasts had also become much smarter. At the same time, the situation with the medical team was not looking optimistic. The gunfire had only temporarily relieved the attack of the wolf pack. As the number of wolves grew, the girls inside the vehicle prepared for the worst. Yet, even so, the blonde girl did not choose to give up, as the vehicle was full of life-saving medicine for the wounded. At this moment, Nan Ziying was also fighting with the wolf pack. He was dispatching one with each stroke of his sword, thoroughly enjoying the battle. However, just then, a giant wolf emitting a crimson aura suddenly appeared. This must be the wolf king. It seems that if I kill him, I can save the medical team, so I must make it quick. The wolf 
Wolf King had noticed his presence and was slowly approaching Nan Ziying. Seeing the increasing number of wolves around him, Nan Ziying did not hesitate to activate his beast taming talent skill. Accompanied by a deafening boom, a giant tree formed from gathered energy sprouted from the ground, instantly binding the mutant wolves. All this was witnessed by the Wolf King, who howled at the sky. With the Wolf King's empowerment, the wolves broke free from their restraints and began snarling as they surrounded Nan Ziying. Shoot the horse first when aiming for the rider, capture the king first when fighting the thief. I must deal with the wolf king first. Then, he used his talent tree to lift himself into the air, followed by a leap that brought him directly above the wolf king. By the time the wolf king tried to dodge, it was too late. Nan Ziying landed a heavy punch on the wolf king's head. The moment he touched the wolf king's skull, he activated his taming skill, and instantly, an invisible energy enveloped the wolf king's massive body. Following this, the wolf king's eyes cleared, and the wolves around them lowered their proud heads. Seeing this, Nan Ziying immediately activated his talent tree skill, instantly taming all the mutant wolves. On the other side, the sisters in the car were preparing to make a desperate move, but just as the blonde girl stepped on the accelerator to break out, she found that no matter what, the car wouldn't start. The short-haired girl muttered, we're done for, and in the next second, the wolves had completely surrounded them. The car windows shattered instantly. Just as they thought they were going to die at the paws of the wolves, the eyes of the mutant wolf pack suddenly became gentle, and they even looked somewhat adorable. While the sisters were still confused, the mutant wolves suddenly retreated. What's going on? Why did the wolf pack suddenly leave? Oh my god, look over there, there seems to be someone. He alone has tamed tens of thousands of wolves, this person is too strong. At this moment, Nan Ziying opened his attribute panel, thinking, if only I had maxed out my beast taming talent earlier in my previous life, I wouldn't have died so easily at the hands of the numerous races. Now, taming thousands of mutant wolves on my first attempt is a successful first step. You all seem pretty well behaved, let's disband here for today. I'll summon you if needed. Remember, you must not attack humans anymore. After dispersing the wolf pack, Nan Ziying prepared to move deeper into the area. After all, the invasion of the numerous races couldn't be resisted by just these mutant wolves. He needed to tame more mutant beasts quickly. Just as he was about to continue forward, his phone suddenly received a message from the trial tower, indicating that the trial grounds wanted him to return for an urgent meeting. Could something have happened? It turned out that a high-ranking officer had arrived at the trial grounds. Unexpectedly, the officer started berating them right away. Your Karma City branch is really disappointing. You exceeded the tasks a few days ago, and now you say you can't do it. Seeing this, the person in charge immediately stepped forward to explain, No, officer, most of us here are elderly, weak, or sick. We can handle ordinary mutant beasts, but you've assigned us some above level 4, and we simply don't have the experience to deal with those. Hearing this, the officer became instantly infuriated. You can't even handle this, and you talk about defending the country? Do you know how severe the situation on the battlefield is? So many soldiers on the front line are going without food to ensure the supply of the troops, we must start with these stronger mutant beasts. At this, the person in charge almost fell over. Such a heavy responsibility was thrust upon him, and it was too much to bear. I will arrange for more staff to work overtime to handle this, officer. However, the officer intensified his criticism. No one in your karma city is of any use, I see. I've been here half a day, and not a single person came to receive me. Just wait for your punishment. Little Lu couldn't help but retort. The level of these high-grade exotic beasts you've brought us is nearly that of level 4 mutant beasts, which is beyond what our karma city can handle. Hearing this, the officer sneered, so you're saying I'm being unreasonable? Right, there isn't a single responsible person in your karma city. The first one who refused to enlist and deserted was from your karma city. At this, Andy Zhang became instantly furious. What right do you have to act high and mighty here? My husband and three sons all died on the front line for the country. Does that also sound irresponsible to you? We old men and women work around the clock, 24 hours a day, just to keep up with the front line supply needs. How can you dismiss everything we've done with just one sentence. Hearing this, the officer smirked. What a shrew. Seeing this, two high-level ability users move forward to discipline Auntie Jean. A shrew dares to be disrespectful to an officer. She's looking for death. But the next second, the ability user who had just spoken was suddenly thrown backward. Witnessing this, the officer was also baffled. What's going on? Could it be that Karma City is hiding a high-level ability user? The person returning at high speed was Nan Zi. Officer, even if there's an argument, there's no need to strike these elderly and infirm, right? Seeing this, Auntie Lee exclaimed with excitement. Great, little Nan is back. The person in charge also turned to look at Nan Ziying. Isn't this the deserter Nan Ziying? He doesn't seem as bad as the rumors say. He just knocked out a level 5 ability user with one punch. At this, the officer also changed his tone. Who are you? Weren't all the young people supposed to be fighting at the front? He then raised his handgun. Insurrection. Is Karma City trying to rebel? Nan Ziying then realized, this man was Lin Yukai, who in his previous life made a fortune from war profits and was globally wanted and executed 12 years after the war began. In his previous life, this guy had always been trafficking the various supplies needed at the front. He must
must have set his sights on Karma City's processing speed of exotic beasts, hoping to use Karma City to slaughter more high-level exotic beasts and pocket the profits from selling their materials. In this life, he would not allow such a parasite to emerge again. However, what needed to be done now was to drain the resources from his hands first, so he quickly suppressed the anger in his heart and said, There are no traitors here planning a rebellion, and these are not the irresponsible workers you speak of. The elders beside him echoed, As an officer, you point a gun at us like this. Haven't we sacrificed enough for the war against the numerous races? With this, Lin Yukai found himself in a difficult position. He had thought Karma City was just filled with the old and weak, but unexpectedly, such a skilled person had emerged to complicate things. He then realized that this young man looked familiar. It was Nan Ziying, the one who had refused to enlist. You, a coward, hide here. And not only that, but you dare to strike a superior and injure a soldier. Even executing you on the spot would meet no objections. As a level 5 ability user was about to step forward to act, Nan Ziying merely smiled slightly. That's quite all right, but then no one would be able to handle the tens of thousands of mutant beasts in the trial tower. At this, Lin Yukai was momentarily stunned, so it was him who killed all those beasts in the trial tower before. No wonder the supply progress of Karma City has been so fast. While Lin Yukai was still in shock, Nan Ziying continued, The exotic beasts you brought have evil energy. I suppose other regions wouldn't be able to handle such special mutant beasts, which is why you came to try your luck in Karma City. I would actually like to take on this task, but if you intend to kill me, I can't help you. Beside him, Lin Yukai felt puzzled. How could a deserter be so familiar with mutant beasts? Seeing the reactions of the people around, it seemed that his words were true. It might be better to just go with the flow and let him take on this task. Young man, I hope what you say is true. Let's make a military decree right now, and tomorrow I will send 5,000 exotic beasts over. If you can handle them within a week, I'll let you off. If you fail, it won't just be you, but the whole Karma City will be punished. Just as they were leaving, Little Lu hurried over. Mr. Nan, mutant beasts are not so easy to handle. We can help you if needed. Hearing this, Nan Ziying reassured them, just do your own jobs well. Now, Nan Ziying's beast taming talent had already reached level 7, and the exotic beasts Lin Yukai was sending were among the stronger level 4 mutant beasts. They have high defense and strong mental interference capabilities, serving not only as supplies, but also as valuable materials. Lin Yukai, this scoundrel, would do anything for money, but thanks to him, these demons were the perfect material for Nan Ziying to level up his Azura talent. Soon, 5,000 level 4 mutant beasts were all delivered. A portly officer began to read the military decree. Karma City Logistics Soldier Nan Ziying is given one week to complete the task of handling 5,000 level 4 mutant beasts. Should he fail to complete the task on time, according to regulations, the military supply officer Lin Yukai has the right to deal with you. According to the rules, you are suspected of disobeying orders, inciting worker riots, and assaulting an officer. In case of delay, multiple charges will be combined, and there will be no need to report. Execution by firing squad will be carried out on the spot. Upon hearing this, Little Lu looked incredulous. Execution by firing squad? The portly officer scoffed. Is there a problem? Didn't you agree quite readily yesterday when the military decree was issued? But if it really comes to that, it will be my duty to personally execute Nan Ziying. After saying this, he patted Nan Ziying on the shoulder. I believe you will enjoy that process. Nan Ziying casually took the military decree. You're just a messenger. Why so much talk? Seeing this, the bodyguard was about to take action, but was stopped by the portly officer. He's a man about to die. No need to argue with him. Then everyone put on masks to start processing, as handling these beasts required releasing anesthetic smoke. Nan Ziying walked towards the trial grounds without hesitation. At this moment, the portly officer also felt puzzled. He has been tested with psychic abilities. He's not a psychic. Even I can't stay long with those level 4 mutant beasts. Surely even if he comes out, he must have gone mad. We'll just wait here to execute him. But then again, Boss Len is also petty. Just because he thought I was taking too much of a cut to think he'd trust a deserter. It's just a waste of time. When that kid dies, all this murder merchandise will still be mine. You know how to report this to the boss, right? Don't worry, I'll report everything that happens here accurately. Meanwhile, for Nan Ziying, dealing with level 4 mutant beasts, even if its body was paralyzed, its mental strength was still abundant. Not only that, these mutant beasts could even manifest illusions. But for Nan Ziying, all this was futile. Then, he jumped up from the ground. Save it. To me, you are just illusions. As long as you can't control me mentally, these illusions are nothing but immovable targets to me. And to upgrade his Azura talent, he needed more evil energy. Nan Ziying continued, better show me your real skills, or you'll miss your chance. Then, a low hum echoed in his mind. Looking back, he saw countless streams of evil energy gathering from the ground, wrapping around his feet. Suddenly a consciousness entered Nan Ziying's mind. You're too tired. Let everything go. Humans need to learn to live easier. Think about the price you've paid. Think about your relatives who died around you, your father, your mother. Do you think it's all worth it? The numerous races are so powerful. How will you ever take revenge on them? But Nan Ziying grabbed the evil energy beside him and said, are you done talking? 
If so, be quiet for a while. Fat. He pulled the evil energy out of his mind. My vengeance against the numerous races is natural. What future humanity will have? Only we humans can decide. At this moment, the talent tree slowly grew from within his body, instantly covering all of Nanzi. Once the Azura tree is activated and he enters the Azura state, his physical and mental powers can be exponentially enhanced, and these evil energy are the quickest shortcut to enhancing his talents. Just quietly become my power. As evil energy furiously continued to pour in, Nan Ziing's eyes turned blood red, and as countless evil energies entered his eyes, he couldn't help but roar in rage. Meanwhile, Lin Yukai was enjoying beauties and wine. He muttered to himself, now supplies are getting scarcer and scarcer, not just in Dragon Kingdom, but the front lines of other nations are also grim. I need to take this chance to make a hefty profit, otherwise all the trouble I went through to get these exotic beasts will be wasted. Capable subordinates are greedy, and I also have to watch out for secret investigations by the military. What a hassle. Lin Yukai finished his thought, down the red wine in his hand. Just as he was considering where he could find a stable way to handle high-level mutant beasts, his phone suddenly rang. Report, sir, the Karma City branch, where the military decree was issued, has completed all their tasks. They've almost completed the task in just four days. Hearing this, Lin Yukai was shocked. You're saying they're already finished? Yes, sir. The task of 5,000 level 4 exotic beasts has been confirmed as completed, all handled by that Nan Z. Upon hearing this, Lin Yukai was ecstatic, grabbing the lady next to him. This is truly fantastic. Keep a close eye on that guy for me. I'll be there shortly. At this, the portly officer was also incredulous. This kid actually completed the task ahead of time. I had checked before. That kid doesn't have any psychic abilities. How did he do it? By now, Nan Ziing's talent tree had reached level 5. Over these days, both his physical and mental strength had increased significantly. Although he hadn't broken through to level 6, he had acquired the first skill of his Azura talent. Next, he must venture deeper into the wilderness to tame even higher level exotic beasts and accelerate his plans. At this moment, Andy Zhang changed her usual demeanor and gave Nan Ziing a thumbs up. Comrade little Nan, you've really made us proud this time. Otherwise, some people would have continued to look down on us in Karma City. They only remember to use us when they can't handle things themselves, and then they act all high and mighty. After upgrading the Azura tree, Nan Ziing's perception of mental power also strengthened. It turned out that this portly man was a psychic. Hearing the mockery, the portly officer was already furious. These nobodies dare to insult me. I must test this kid again. But just as he was about to make a move, he was stopped by a bodyguard nearby. Don't break the boss's rules. You know what he's capable of. We have to wait for the boss to come. Besides, there's too much residual psychic energy from the demons here, and acting rashly will cause interference. But at this point, the portly officer couldn't care less. I will explain personally to the boss later. With that, several psychic attacks were launched towards Nan Zi, but Nan Ziing had also noticed the portly officer's intentions. Too bad you've messed with the wrong person today. This is a good chance to test the abilities of the Azura talent tree. At this moment, the portly officer was also baffled. He had already invaded his psychic system, but somehow the effect was not as expected. Invading the psychic system should allow him to see the other's psychic entity, but all he saw was pitch black. The next second, the portly officer seemed to realize something was wrong. Then he turned to look behind him. How is this possible? What he saw was a psychic entity formed from evil energy. What level of psychic are you? I had checked earlier. The portly man's eyes were full of terror. Tell me, who exactly are you? But the next second, his hefty legs were bound by evil energy. Nan Ziing said coldly, who I am is not important. You wanted to probe my psychic world, right? Then I'll let you have a good look. With that, a torrent of evil energy rushed into the portly man's mind. This magnitude of evil energy was more than he could handle, and he immediately screamed, please, spare me. In reality, the portly man spat out a mouthful of blood, and everyone around was at a loss. Clearly, his psyche had been destabilized. All of this is mine. None of you can take a share. Lin Yukai, you old fool. I could handle all of this by myself. Yet not only did you not trust me, but you also had someone watch me. The two Andes were also baffled. Is being a leader really that stressful? Just a few curses, and he can't handle it. Meanwhile, a bodyguard thought he was affected by residual psychic powers. He must be mad. Continuing to speak so recklessly could ruin the boss's plans. With that, he forcefully punched him in the head. Immediately, everyone on the scene was speechless. What is this guy doing? The bodyguard explained, he's been affected by the demon's psychic power, and he could be dangerous to everyone, so it had to be done right here and now. Then, the bodyguard came over to Nan Ziing and said, looks like this kid was also interfered with. That idiot, the fat man, killed himself and screwed this kid up too. We won't be needing him anymore. Let's head back and report. He then reminded the others to keep working. But at that moment, Nan Ziing suddenly displayed a strange smile. His azure level is now 6. The next day, comrade little Nan, Man, you finally woke up. We really owe it to you this time. He's all right now. Everyone get back to work. Could it be that Lin Yukai has sent more high-level mutant beasts? Asked Nan Ziing. Auntie Zhang replied, Half of the branch staff have been sent to help at other factories, and the military supply demands at the front have doubled. The 9th 
defense line has completely collapsed and the battle situation is extremely dire. Whether it's the army or the air force, our troops are no match for the numerous races mutant beasts. The hope for level 7 ability user, son of thunder punishment, has lost an arm and is barely clinging to life. The level 6 ability user, the flame giant, has died a heroic death for the country. Nan Zing hadn't expected this collapse to come so much earlier than in his previous life, and the death of the portly officer has already been officially attributed by the leadership to psychic interference by demons, and it was determined to have no connection with Karma City. There's something even more important I need to tell you, Andy Zhang said. Hearing this, Nan Zing looked at Andy Zhang with a puzzled face. Little Lu, come here and tell him. Little Nan, we all unanimously elect you as the head of the Karma City branch of the trial tower. Here is the official appointment letter from the higher-ups. Upon hearing this, Nan Zing looked bewildered. Andy Zhang also signaled, Little Nan, don't shy away from it. This is everyone's recognition of you. From now on, we'll have to call you Station Head Nan. Let's all work hard together. But with the tasks now doubled and the workforce halved, even if everyone works non-stop, how many of us will still be standing in a month? Station Head, what do you think? How should we handle this work? Nan Zing realized that this task could only depend on himself. With his beast taming talent and Azura talent at level 7 and 6 respectively properly utilized, he could at least double the efficiency. Everyone else would just need to stick to their roles. With the position of Station Head, he could more effectively allocate resources and lead everyone to complete the tasks. The plan to drain Lin Yukai also now had more room for maneuver. Little Lu was about to go and appeal to the higher-ups, but Nan Zing stopped her. I've already thought of a way. Saying this, Nan Zing slowly got out of bed. I know everyone is worried about my health, but trust me, the task will definitely be completed. But just then, a shadow flashed past the door. Such speed definitely couldn't belong to any of the workers at the station. So, Nan Zing stretched his legs and chased outside. Right, it must be in this direction. But after searching for a while, he couldn't find any trace of the mysterious person. At that moment, the cold muzzle of a gun was pressed against the back of his head. The mysterious lady slowly spoke. I ask one question, you answer one. The order you took from Lin Yukai, how many mutant beasts are in the next batch? Are they delivering, or are you picking them up? But Nan Zing remained calm. You should ask Lin Yukai that. Hearing this, the lady looked puzzled. Aren't you guys working together? And please, answer my question seriously. Taking advantage of the moment the lady was distracted by talking, Nan Zing suddenly activated his Azura talent, knocking the weapon out of the lady's hand with a swift move. But the lady was also skilled, suddenly producing another gun and aiming it at Nan Zing as she pulled the trigger. However, Nan Zing's Azura talent directly swallowed the bullet. Who told you I'm an accomplice of that scoundrel Lin Yukai? I think you've mistaken me for someone else. As she backed away, the lady questioned further. If that's the case, then why are you helping him? Nan Zing explained, I'm not helping him. This is just a task assigned to our Karma City branch by him. Even if he is the worm or the scoundrel you speak of, he is still our direct superior for now. The lady was shocked on the spot. I didn't expect you to know all about Lin Yotsai's dirty deeds so clearly. Then, she proposed to him, in that case, how about we collaborate to take down Lin Yukai? I'm Zhang Yuan from the Logistics Intelligence Section 2 of the 8th Defense Line. Saying this, she slowly extended her right hand. Nice to meet you. At this, Nan Zing spoke softly. I refuse. Seeing the refusal, Zhang Yuan's expression instantly turned cold. So you're choosing to aid a tyrant? Zhang Yuan asked. Nan Zing directly denied. Lin Yotsai's fate has already been sealed. It's neither time to act now, nor to collaborate with you, because you do not understand the consequences of removing him. Zhang Yuan thought for a long time time, but did not understand what Nan Zing was trying to say. Thus, Nan Zing slowly explained, if you want to remove Lin Yukai, you have two options, assassination or internal exposure. If you choose assassination, what if there is more than one person involved? Do you plan to eliminate them all? Aside from whether you have the capability, have you carefully considered whether you can bear the consequences of failure? Internal processing first requires evidence collection, which will take an indeterminate amount of time. With the current state of the war, where humanity is at a disadvantage, if news of corruption in rear supply lines lines were to leak, it would certainly be interpreted by outsiders as internal strife. Once it triggers unnecessary chain reactions, leading to chaos among the rear forces, everyone would then only be able to look after themselves. How could the soldiers at the front still have the heart to fight against the beasts? After this analysis by Nan Zing, Zhang Yuan finally understood the serious implications. Based on what you're saying, then what should be done? There's nothing difficult about it. Just leave Lin Yukai to me, Nan Zing answered. Hearing this, Zhang Yuan looked at Nan Zing doubtfully. Did I hear that right? You mean you're going to handle Lin Yukai by yourself? Save it. Even I can't deal with them. How can I expect you, a deserter who dares not enter the battlefield, to dispel Zhang Yuan's doubts about him? Nan Zing had no choice but to release his Azura aura again. You and I have already sparred before. How about we spar a few more moves to test? Zhang Yuan could clearly sense the terrifying energy fluctuations emanating from him. In just a moment, the aura displayed by this man had become more than twice as strong as before. Thus, she recalled all the information about Nan Zing. He chose to be ridiculed 
and handle the mutant beast corpses in the rear, hunting those beasts all day and night. Could it be that he chose this path, because he's been strengthening his abilities by continuously killing beasts? With this thought, everything made sense. At this point, Nan Ziing sighed. I've said what needs to be said, and what shouldn't be asked. Don't ask. I trust you're wise enough to understand that everyone has some secrets, right? As for the worm Lin Yukai, rest assured, leave him to me. With the conversation having reached this point, Zhang Yuan had little more to say. Since that's the case, I'll reluctantly agree. At this moment, Nan Ziying made a request. After dealing with Lin Yukai, I will need you to provide more beasts. Hearing this, Zhang Yuan became even more puzzled. How many mutant beasts do you actually need? Even with your current strength being quite formidable, could it be that you plan to hide behind human lines and become a threat to humanity after growing stronger? Rest assured, even in death, I am part of the human camp, and I aim to completely expel the numerous races. It's just that my current strength isn't sufficient. I've said almost all there is to say. I'm leaving now. Watching Nan Ziing's departing figure, she couldn't help but muse. He's really an enigmatic person. For now, I'll choose to trust him. Three days later, a large batch of mutant beasts arrived, and their level had been upgraded from four to five. Anti Zhang was very unhappy about this, but Nan Ziing reassured everyone, don't worry, we are fully capable of completing this task. Hearing the affirmative response, Lin Yukai laughed out loud. Station head Nan really acts decisively. Nan Ziing is not only more capable than the fat man, but he's also a kickback free worker. Moreover, the troublemakers in the intelligence group have been very quiet lately, and with the frontline soldiers at a disadvantage, orders have increased several fold from before. This is truly a godsend opportunity to make a fortune. Then he patted Nan Ziing on the shoulder. Young man, ask for anything you need. If you do well in what comes next, I, Lin, will not let you down. Hearing this, Nan Ziing didn't speak, but methodically began assigning tasks to everyone. Everyone take care of your own tasks. Send this batch of beasts to the first level of the trial tower, and these level 5 mutant beasts and containers to the second level. Make sure there are no mix-ups. Lin Yukai couldn't help but praise. The work atmosphere in Karma City really puts one at ease. Station head Nan, I won't disturb you any further. See you later. At this moment, Nan Ziing gave a slight smile. Lin Yukai, all these things of yours are nourishment for upgrading my Azura talent. With that, he pulled out the alloy demon blade he carried, activating its skill. Instantly, a terrifying aura burst forth from him. As the evil aura on the alloy demon blade intensified, the swarms of mutant beasts instantly became his Azura killing points. In no time, his Azura level reached 6. As he continued to swing his long blade, the Azura level crazily surged. Meanwhile, on the front lines, March 20th, Eagle Land's 8th defense line, a brutal battle lasting for 4 hours. 800,000 soldiers fell, 50,000 espers perished, resulting in the line's collapse. Meanwhile, Nan Ziing's Azura level continued to increase. Alloy Demon Blade, Azura Berserker. March 22nd, the North Glacier defense line collapsed, 600,000 frontline soldiers died in battle. Alloy Dragon, Azura, Dragon Slayer. March 24th, the South Glacier encountered a slaughter race, 500,000 soldiers died within an hour. Alloy Demon Blade, Azura, Demon Slayer. March 26th, France's 8th defense line and Kawasaki Nation's 8th line both collapsed entirely in just half an hour. At this time, Nan Ziing's Azura tree skill had been trained to max level. He roared, full release of evil energy, Azura returns. Instantly, a devastating red and white energy shot up into the sky. The appearance of the max level Azura's human health form also changed, with a surge of red evil energy bursting from his body into the sky, while the surrounding red and black evil energy crazily rushed into him. The level 5 mutant beasts snarled eagerly. If that's the case, then let's test it on you first. That, he slowly raised his long blade, with red and black energy wildly surging over the blade. Instantly, many beasts became dismembered corpses. Then, with a slash, he left a deep pit a hundred meters deep in the ground. So this is the power of a max level Azura. The strength has increased geometrically compared to the previous level. With Nan Ziing saying Azura state, disengage, his body returned to its original form, with so many source stones. Next, it will be possible to upgrade the beast taming skills. Currently, only Dragon Kingdom, Rice Country, and Hare Country are still desperately holding on. The Eastern Alliance has issued another call for recruits, age lowered to 16. At this moment, Lin Yukai walked over with a satisfied look. Station head Nan, your efficiency has improved again. Tell me, if there's anything you need from Lin, just say it. Hearing this, Nan Ziing drew out his tone and slowly said three words, I want you. This caused the bodyguards nearby to break out in a cold sweat. Nan Ziing then slightly smiled, I want you to bring back a batch of steel wolves tonight. Upon hearing this, Lin Yukai immediately breathed a sigh of relief. Station head Nan really dragged that sentence out. Good nerve, then I'll leave it to you, Officer Lin. Lin Yukai reassured him, but thought to himself, if you try any tricks, I can have you killed in minutes. Meanwhile, Nan Ziing was also planning how to eliminate Lin Yukai. He then ordered the wolf cubs to lure all the nearby wolf packs. Looking out over the wasteland filled with red wolf eyes, the 
Beast Tamer level also rose to 7, but the requirements for the next upgrade reached an astronomical figure. Meanwhile, 10 kilometers outside the city, three military vehicles were driving into the heart of the wasteland, and Lin Yukai, who was out wolf hunting, was on board. At that moment, the driver reported that there was a pack of about 1,000 mutant wolves ahead. Lin Yukai immediately ordered the driver to charge through, directly transport them into the nano cages. We can head home earlier and do other things. Soon after, Lin Yukai noticed something unusual outside, and the driver looked out to see the scene, breaking out in a cold sweat. Not good, sir. We're surrounded by a tide of steel wolves. At this moment, Lin Yukai was panic-stricken and immediately ordered his men to start the transport to a safe location, but the driver said that the transport point was too far to initiate transport, and now the only option was to floor the gas pedal and try to break through the wolf pack, hoping for a slim chance of survival. Then stop the damn nonsense and just drive, Lin Yukai roared. But what they didn't know was that this tide of steel wolves was orchestrated by Nan Z. Indeed, it's a wonderful night, hunting wolves and killing pests at once. Lin Yukai, it's also time to deal with you, you parasite. Instantly, a red magic circle appeared beneath Nan Zing's feet. As he shouted tame, a wave of red energy extended from the ground forward, and the wolf pack immediately stopped attacking the military vehicles. Lin Yukai also witnessed this scene, thinking there might be a beast tamer ahead, and mistook it for a savior, instantly breaking into tears of joy. I've never heard of such a powerful beast tamer in Karma City. Perhaps it's some hidden master. Getting to know him might even be useful to me. But just then, Nan Zing suddenly commanded the wolf pack. He slammed his hands down on the ground, tear apart that convoy ahead, leave none alive. In the blink of an eye, the wolves encircled the convoy again. Seeing this, Lin Yukai immediately ordered, use firepower to suppress them. However, overwhelmed by the sheer number of wolves, many soldiers were killed on the spot. The wolves quickly smashed the vehicle windows. Seeing this, a bodyguard shouted, the officer is in danger. Lin Yukai was still hoping to be transported to a safe place, but the next second, a steel wolf pounced over, and the bodyguard also shielded Lin Yukai with his body. Seeing the wolves pouncing on the bodyguard's head, who was also a level 5 ability user, he yelled, you beasts, today you'll taste my power. He quickly repelled the first wave of the wolf attack, but then another dense wave pressed forward. The bodyguard realized this approach was unsustainable, especially since the number of nano cages was limited. They were now close to the nearest transport point at the ancient city wall, but the next second, a dark figure appeared behind Lin Yukai. Seeing this, the bodyguard immediately asked, who are you? Upon removing the mask, it turned out to be Nan Zi. Lin Yukai, puzzled, asked, are you the beast tamer from before? Are you trying to kill me? Nan Zing confirmed, yes, I am here to kill you. Even facing death, Lin Yukai still retorted defiantly, if you dare touch me, I assure you that you and your family will die horribly. Hearing this, Nan Zing said, I believe you could do that, but unfortunately, you won't have that chance. With that, he reached for Lin Yutsai's neck. Seeing this, Lin Yukai could only look towards his bodyguard. The bodyguard signaled, sir, don't be afraid, I will transport you to a safe place right now. To avoid prolonged complications, Nan Zing immediately activated his Azura Dragon Slayer mode. Killing move, condensed the essence of Azura into a dragon of murderous intent. Defense, blocks all lower level psychic and spatial manipulations. Instantly, a terrifying surge of energy burst from Nan Zing's body, instantly severing all psychic power connections. Then, the bodyguard also found that no matter what, he could not activate the transport circle. Could you be a high level psychic? This is impossible. But as soon as the words left his mouth, he was met with an unforgiving punch from Nan Zi. Instantly, blood spurted from the bodyguard's head, and he died beyond any doubt. At this point, Lin Yukai still tried to beg for mercy, but Nan Zing merely said indifferently, sorry. Lin Yukai would never understand why Nan Zing, supposedly a deserter, was so intent on killing him, but Nan Zing didn't bother with explanations. After a series of screams and tearing sounds, Lin Yukai was completely torn to shreds by the wolf pack. Farewell, Lin Yukai. Meanwhile, at the Ability User Investigation Bureau in Karma City, another strong psychic aura was detected. The woman, a level 5 sensory psychic named Su Len, noted, it seems that the sensation from a few days ago was not an illusion. It's very likely that a supremely powerful ability user has emerged in Karma City. I must report this to the higher-ups immediately. Meanwhile, on Nan Zing's side, the wolf cubs kept playfully frolicking in front of him and licking his face. Nan Zing signaled, all of you sit nicely, you all did quite well this time. He then specially rewarded them by patting their heads. No need to rush, you all will get your turn. Next, I'll assign you a new task to help me gather source stones in the northern Gobi Desert. As soon as his words fell, the wolf pack howled at the moon like a well-disciplined troop. Afterwards, he returned to the Karma City Slaughterhouse. Zhang Yuan also received news of Lin Yutsai's total annihilation in the northern wasteland and asked, did you do this? Upon hearing this, Nan Zing first took a bite of a meat bun and said, well, I did tell him I wanted a few mutant wolves. Seeing this, Zhang Yuan placed her hands on her hips and questioned, do you also have the ability to control beasts? But Nan Z 
unseeing gestured for her to keep her voice down, as they say, the workings of heaven must not be revealed. This left Zhang Yuan looking puzzled, and she helplessly spread her hands and said, Getting back to the point, I've already submitted all the evidence of Lin Yotsai's embezzlement, and I believe his assets will soon be confiscated. To this, Nan Zing simply responded, That's good. Zhang Yuan said, Anyway, I still have to thank you for this time. How about I buy you a drink tonight? But Nan Zing was quite dismissive. Forget about having a drink. With the nation in crisis, I'm not in the mood for that. However, he suddenly stopped walking, turned back with a playful tone, and said, If you really want to thank me, maybe there are other ways. Hearing this, Zhang Yuan's pretty face suddenly turned red. Like what? But Nan Zing's next answer made her quite embarrassed. I'm thinking of turning this place into the largest slaughterhouse in Karma City, taking in 10 times, a hundred times the number of mutant poultry than other slaughterhouses. With a continuous supply of mutant poultry, Nan Zing's speed of acquiring source stones was effortless. Coupled with the prey captured by the steel wolves, he would soon be able to orchestrate a million beast tide. The rise and fall of the world is the responsibility of every individual. Today, I, Nan Zing, invite you all to station in the northern wastes, to protect Blue Star together. Soon, in the northern Gobi Desert, he had amassed 500,000 level 5 steel wolves. Next, he reached the habitat of level 6 steel consumption cattle, Bone Plains. With a wave of his hand, a burst of red energy shot out, and soon this energy enveloped all the steel consumption cattle. With a loud shout of tame from him, the steel consumption cattle were immediately subdued, and he arranged for them to be stationed there, helping him to hunt for source stones, and they were instructed not to harm people or attack cities, ready to be called upon at any moment. Before long, he attained a total of 500,000 steel consumption cattle. After that, Nan Zing moved on to Rift Canyon, still needing 1 million source stones. He planned to tame a group of level 7 mutant apes next. True to their level 7 status, these beasts had a much more powerful presence than the previous wolves and cattle. The difference was like night and day. Their speed and mighty aura were formidable, but for Nan Zing at this point, they were merely a minor challenge. With a casual wave of his hands and a loud shout of tame, he followed up with a punch to the head of an ape. Fortunately, it was still within a tameable range, but then an overwhelming number of apes surrounded him, accompanied by a fierce roar. Before Nan Zing could react, the previously tamed mutant ape attacked him from behind. It seems the taming failed. In that case, I'll have to subdue it first before taming. Saying this, he immediately entered the Azura Berserker state. Instantly, the body of the ape was smashed into the ground, causing stones to fly and dust to rise. At the same time, Nan Zing pushed his level 8 beast taming skills to the limit. However, as the roaring sound rose again, the apes he had just frightened charged at him again, bearing their teeth. Nan Zing realized that the roar was likely the reason for the taming failure, but it would be a pity to kill these numerous level 7 mutant apes. He needed to deal with the boss behind the scenes first. Thus, he cleaved one ape in half with his blade, but more apes attacked him. Unfortunately, in his view, these apes weren't very smart. Quickly, he cleared several apes, then used the heads of other apes to jump on the spot, and in a blink, he leaped into a canyon. Come out, it's time for a new ruler here. But then Nan Zing looked up and thought, this head is ridiculously big. If it weren't for my Azura power, this aura would have instantly killed me. It seemed the Ape King was at least level 9, possibly higher, and its attack speed was surprisingly fast. It even opened its mouth attempting to swallow Nan Zing whole. But Nan Zing wasn't one to be eaten easily. He immediately slashed down with his Azura blade, causing the Ape King to clench its teeth in pain. The Ape King tried to crush Nan Zing's head, but missed. And then another fierce punch came smashing down. Nan Zing, caught off guard, was fiercely slammed into the ground by the Ape King. Nan Zing realized he had to get serious, or else he would be taken as an easy target. He immediately switched to the Azura human hell state. Instantly, a terrifying surge of energy violently flowed, and the blade hummed with a buzzing sword chant. Red energy continuously circled around his body. Meanwhile, at the Ability User Survey Bureau, I'm telling you, sis, are your feelings even accurate? It's past 3 a.m. and there's not a sign of anything. We can't keep this up. But Su Len insisted that she could not be mistaken about the intense murderous aura, and the higher-ups had instructed them to keep a close watch on Karma City for a few more days. Just bear with it. Besides, we're the same age. Who are you calling Big Sis? The purple-haired Lolita was visibly displeased, looking at those lumps of fat on your chest. I'm being polite by not calling you auntie. Suddenly, a red cloud appeared in the sky, and Su Len immediately signaled her to keep it down. It's here. The target is at the southwestern rift canyon of Karma City. Get ready to track. Hearing this, Lolita Zhao Kir activated her tracing psychic power. The universe is boundless, the origin of all life. She was a woman who had opened the heavenly eye tracing ability called Supreme Strongest, but the scene she witnessed left her dumbstruck, for what she saw was not human, but a demonic azure from hell. Turning to Nan Zing's side, he asked, So, are you convinced now? At that moment, he had the Monkey King cornered, bleeding from the mouth and gasping for air. If not, get up and fight again, but I won't guarantee that I'll hold back next time. Upon hearing this, the Monkey King struggled to rise. You're still spirited, aren't you? Wouldn't it be a pity to die?
die in battle like this? Why not become my comrade in arms and resist the myriad clans together? Hearing this, the Monkey King's eyes suddenly brightened and he slowly extended his giant paw. Is this guy looking for another fight? But as his fist reached above Nan Zing's head, it suddenly stopped. Seeing this, Nan Zing also placed his fist on top. Well done, brother ape. After saying this, he immediately returned to normal and the Monkey King also knelt down towards Nan Zing at once. At this time, Nan Zing slowly said, millions of rampaging apes, heed my command. From now on, you will still follow the Ape King, stationed in the Rift Canyon to gather source stones. Remember not to harm people, not to attack cities, and be ready to serve at any time. By now, Nan Zing's Beast Tamer level had reached level 8, and he possessed an army of 2 million level 5 to 7 mutated beasts. Meanwhile, Su Len and Zhao Qir were still discussing everything that happened last night. Su Len clearly felt two distinct, powerful energies, but unfortunately, Zhao Qir's retrospective ability could only be used once every 24 hours and lasted only for 3 seconds. Even so, Su Len was certain that these two different forces belonged to the same person. Zhao Qir said, that's impossible, isn't it? We've been scanning for so long, leaving some slots open for the top 10 ability users for some mysterious families. But this Azura immediately secured at least a top 10 spot upon arrival. That's already a terrifying level of individual power. Don't think too much about it. Let's just release the rankings quickly, Su Len said. Sure enough, Nan Zing Sejura psychic power was temporarily ranked at number 10. As soon as this ranking was published, it caused a national uproar. A mysterious figure in black appeared in the Rift Canyon of Karma City, and his lethality made it directly into the top 10 of the Eastern Alliance's psychic rankings, filling the entire comment section with various opinions. But some people insist on comparing the mysterious person with Nan Ziying, preferring even an unconscious Azura madman over the deserter Nan Ziying. Little did they know, this mysterious person ranked 10th was indeed Nan Ziying. At this time, Nan Ziying had also returned to the slaughterhouse, and seeing the 8th defensive line of rice country and hare country collapsing in succession, he was startled. The Dragon Kingdom also launched the old soldier's recall plan, but just then, he received a message from his dad. You little rascal, come home for dinner if you're free tonight. Your mom misses you terribly. It turns out that Nan Ziying's father is a chef with excellent cooking skills, who personally prepares meals for his soon-to-return son and daughter, and indicates that the reporter lady can stay and join them for a meal. Nan's father is a retired veteran, and the lady's purpose was simply to conduct a brief interview. As Nan's father had just finished his preparations, he gestured to her, feel free to ask anything you'd like. The reporter, named Fang Lin, asked, hello, Mr. Nan Xiongshan, I heard that as soon as you received the old soldier's recall notice, you immediately signed up. What were you thinking at that moment? Nan's father answered solemnly, it's my duty, and I cannot shirk it. But then, Fang Lin brought up Nan Ziying, regarding your son's refusal to join the military. What are your thoughts? Upon hearing this, Nan's father immediately fell silent. But just then, Nan's mother entered with their children, and they walked into this awkward scene. Nan's father signaled them to wait at the table while he answered a few questions. He gestured to Fang Lin, as you can see, comrade reporter, our family doesn't get to gather together often. My spouse volunteers at the factory. My daughter is a rescue medic. And although my son hasn't gone to the battlefield, he has been working tirelessly at the slaughterhouse to supply the front lines. In my heart, he's a good kid, and whatever he chooses to do, I support his decision. At that moment, Fang Lin suddenly turned to Nan Ziying and asked, Mr. Nan Ziying, I heard many of your classmates have sacrificed their lives on the battlefield. Could you share your... But before she could finish, Nan's father angrily interrupted her, Enough, stop pressuring him. I was originally scheduled to go to the 8th defensive line when the veterans registered, but now I've voluntarily applied to go to the 7th line. Is that enough for you to stop asking? My son may not have gone to the front line, but slaughtering beasts is equally dangerous. We provide the most supplies to the front lines from Karma City. Doesn't that count as a contribution? The media always blows this issue of staying behind out of proportion. What exactly is the point of your work? At this point, Nan Zishan also stood up. If that's not enough, I can also apply to go to the 7th defensive line as a medical volunteer. At this, Nan's mother couldn't stand it any longer. If it comes to it, I'll go in place of my son. Suddenly, the whole scene fell silent. At this moment, the photographer and Fang Lin were also stunned by the determination of this family. Sorry for the disturbance. We'll leave now. Then, Nan Ziying firmly slammed his fist on the table, making his final decision. Dad, I will go with you. Before even finishing his meal, Nan Ziying was ready to turn and leave. Nan's mother signaled, can't you stay and finish your meal? Nan's father lowered his head and pondered for a moment. Well, we've seen each other now, so let him go. He has his own things to do. Soon, Nan Ziying arrived at the original Forest Sea. He was in a hurry to get here because he wanted to tame more war elephants before heading to the battlefield, which would significantly enhance the strength of the human race. He shouted into the empty forest, come out, stop hiding. Instantly, a roar echoed from the forest and a gigantic war elephant carrying a tree trunk charged out. In a blink of an eye, it reached Nan Ziying and, without a word, swung the tree trunk at him. In response, Nan Zi 
being swiftly slashed with his sword, cutting the trunk in half, and vanished in a whoosh. The next second, he leaped onto the top of the war elephant's head. Sorry, I'm in a hurry, so I don't have time to waste with you. With that, several eerie red beams appeared in his hand, and smashed down onto the top of the war elephant's head. Instantly, a terrifying wave of energy emanated from the elephant's head, and it gradually calmed down. Nan Ziying placed his long sword on top of the war elephant's head. Go tell all your companions, any who do not comply will be cut down without mercy. Upon the war elephant's dissemination, hundreds more war elephants hurried over, each of them sweating cold sweat and fear. At this moment, their only thought was to survive. Nan Ziying's body radiated an eerie red energy. Millions of war elephants, heed my command, station in the original forest sea, and collect source stones. Do not harm people, do not attack cities, and be ready at any time. At this point, Nan Ziying's tamed animal count had reached a terrifying 3,500,000 steel giant wolves and scorching steel bison and 1 million rampaging apes and war elephants. Then the system issued a prompt. Currently at level 1 formation with enhancement array, evil energy array, and sword energy array. To upgrade, 10,000 arrays need to be set up, each requiring a basic expenditure of 10 source stones, and the power of arrays can be infinitely stacked. The formation talent tree has finally been activated, which means there's more to do next, and I must speed up the upgrade process. First, I'll head back to the slaughterhouse to get some source stones. Soon, he had slain tens of thousands of mutated beasts, obtaining 100,000 source stones, enough to set up 10,000 formations and meet the conditions for upgrading the formation. So, he decided to test the power of the sword energy array using mutated beasts. He silently chanted, heavenly stems and earthly branches, myriad swords arise. Immediately, countless energy swords began to swirl rapidly above him. Nan Ziying shouted, activate the sword energy array. Suddenly, the flying swords spun even faster, instantly killing dozens of mutated beasts. A level 1 single sword energy array is still too weak. Let's try stacking 2,000 sword energy arrays. Instantly, an even more terrifying energy burst forth from within him, and numerous flashes of sword light passed by, again instantly killing dozens of mutated beasts. With this setup, just filling the workshop with formations will save a lot of time and effort in future slaughters. Afterward, he went to the second slaughter room and immediately set up 2,000 sword energy arrays. After finishing, he went alone to the rooftop of the building. It was just beginning to dawn, the time to say goodbye to everyone and head to the front line. At this time, Aunt Wong and others had arrived early at the workshop, but found the doors to the slaughter room wide open. Factory manager Nan must have been slaughtering all night again. This kid probably came straight here after dinner at home. If this keeps up, how will his body hold up? Seeing this, Aunt Wong immediately became furious. This is all because of those pesky reporters stirring things up. Hearing this, Aunt Lee looked puzzled. What news? Aunt Wong took out her phone. Haven't you all seen it? I was fighting with that bunch online all night yesterday. It turned out that Nan Ziying's father had responded to the old soldier's call and was about to head to the seventh defensive line to resist the myriad clans. The overwhelming comments online were disheartening. In ancient times, Mulan enlisted in place of her father, and today, Nan's father enlists in place of his son. A good-for-nothing son, a hero for a father. But Aunt Wong had rebutted each of these scathing comments. The two picked up their phones and immediately expressed their anger. These people are too much. Just then, Nan Ziying suddenly appeared. He said seriously, there are some things I need to explain to everyone. Upon hearing this, the three were shocked. Just as Nan Ziying was about to announce his enlistment, an aunt suddenly handed him a letter. It turned out to be left specially for him by his father before going to the battlefield. Although dad is a godly chef, I'm also a soldier. I may not know exactly what you're planning or enduring, but dad knows you're definitely plotting something big. Because ever since you were little, you've never been one to back down from challenges, just like me. Ha <laughs> Don't think dad doesn't know. That mysterious Azura on the rankings must be you, right? Don't think your dad can't recognize you just because you wear a mask. Since you've endured for so long, don't talk about giving up just for us, and don't pay too much attention to external voices. And your mom is still in Karma City. You must stay and protect her for me. Seeing this, Nan Ziying felt a pang of sorrow. His parents had seen everything he was going through, which affirmed his own thoughts. Seeing Nan Ziying's expression, Little Lu hurriedly came forward to comfort him. Manager, don't put too much pressure on yourself. All these slaughter tasks in Karma City are being held up by you alone. If the front line runs out of supplies, that would be the end of it. Aunt Wong also comforted him from the side. If anyone dares to speak ill of you online again, I, Aunt Wong, will fight back for you. Nan Ziying softly said, I'm fine. I actually just wanted to tell everyone that there was an announcement a few days ago about building the fifth defensive line, right? I want to volunteer as an engineer. Hearing this, little Lu was taken aback. What about the slaughterhouse? Nan Ziying turned back and smiled slightly. Don't worry, it won't delay the slaughtering. Nan's father marched off to the front line with other veterans. Meanwhile, on the outskirts of Karma City, Nan Ziying could only watch from afar. Dad, I've taken note of everything you said. You're right, going to the battlefield now would only allow me to kill a few aliens. It would be of no benefit to the overall situation 
and would also mean repeating the mistakes of my previous life, letting you and my sister down, and failing to protect mom. The myriad clans are non-carbon based life forms, so I can't obtain source stones from them, which means I wouldn't be able to upgrade on the battlefield. As more powerful enemies from the myriad clans appear, humanity's current strength is still doomed to defeat. To ultimately win, we must properly set up the fifth defensive line, as that will be the final battleground between humans and the myriad clans. Dad, I swear I won't let you down. Three days have passed in a blink of an eye, and Nan Ziying has successfully become an engineer of the fifth defensive line. Nan Ziying, true to his reputation as a top student in the architectural department, designed a plan where a 30 meters high and 10 meters thick electric steel wall connects 20 cities, impenetrable even by tanks. But only Nan Ziying knows that this steel electric wall is just a decoy and can't effectively defend against the myriad clans. The real strategy lies in the formations, and setting up these formations requires a massive amount of source stones. Currently, there are only 35 million source stones available, enough to set up 1.75 million second-level formations and 3.5 million first-level formations. The area between Karma City and the fifth backup defensive line is deserted, making it the perfect place to set up formations. The Blazing Fire Array is set up, stacking 50,000 formations over a whole kilometer, instantly lighting up the scene with a creepy red formation. The Elemental Sword Energy Array is also instantly set up, stacking 50,000 formations over a kilometer. The two arrays overlap completely over a kilometer, stacking 50,000 blazing flame arrays over 1 kilometer, and again stacking 50,000 elemental sword energy arrays over 1 kilometer. A total of 500,000 formations are set up, grading the psychic powers to level 3. The formations activated include the earth spike array, frost freeze array, and a 20 times amplification array. This setup can now support up to 5 million formations, with only 25 million source stones remaining. The scene shifts to the construction site the next day, where engineer Lee hurriedly approached to report, Manager Nan, take a look at this first. It turned out to be the fifth defensive line plan designed by Nan Z. It had been confirmed by other nations' battlefields to be utterly ineffective, and the comment sections were filled with negative opinions about Nan Z. Engineer Lee mentioned that if this stirred up trouble, it wouldn't end well, but Nan Z first patted his shoulder. Engineer Lee, continue the construction as normal for now, I'll come up with a reinforced plan. In fact, this defensive line was intended to deceive the alien races, waiting for them to lower their guard and then enter the Rayal Formation defense line unprepared. Even if it was to deceive the enemy, the design of the defensive line still needed to be more practical. After all, the alien races were not fools. Before long, Nan Zing came up with a countermeasure. He picked up a pen, wrote it down in a notebook, and signaled to Engineer Lee that they could dig a canal both in front and behind the city wall, with water channeled in the front and crude oil in the back. If the myriad clans attacked, the electrified steel wall connected to the water canal would electrocute a wave of enemies first. Even if alien powerhouses broke through the steel wall, they would be met with a wave of fire. Hearing this, Engineer Lee was excited. This plan is perfect. He immediately prepared to report to his superiors. At that moment, Nan Ziying realized that if he could activate the forbidden curse element quickly, this defensive line could be much more effective. Then, Nan Ziying started hunting beast tides to gather source stones. With these 90 million source stones, he could upgrade to level 4 all at once. At one city, Chiu City, and Gan City, a 75-kilometer defensive line was set up, stacking a total of 3.75 million second-level formations, along with the newly added Lightning Strike Array and Undead Enhancement Array, reaching a terrifying 40 times amplification. With this setup, the next upgrade would likely take some time to complete. Just then, a terrifying presence approached from behind. This was clearly the familiar aura of an alien race, along with the aura of a human prodigy. Seeing this, Nan Ziying immediately realized something was wrong, suspecting that the aliens had begun to assassinate the human prodigies. Meanwhile, in the secluded ancient clan of Chu in the mountains, a stone monument stood in the backyard of the Chu family's estate, but today it suddenly erupted with a loud noise, startling an elder nearby. The elder was Chu Changxiong, the patriarch of the Chu family. Xing, why have you come out of seclusion two years early? Weren't you supposed to wait twelve years before emerging during the period of the myriad clans? The youth was Chu Xing, the 307th prodigy of the Chu family. His early emergence was due to sensing a powerful domain energy from the northwest frontier, which inspired an insight, prompting his premature breakthrough. With the spiritual energy so scarce in the northwest, how could such a powerful figure emerge? This confusion led him to decide to personally investigate the northwest. However, the elder mentioned that recently, alien races had been assassinating ancient clan prodigies, and feared that this trip might be a one-way journey. But Chu Xing left with the words, in this era of apocalypse, one cannot shy away from danger, then turned and left without looking back, activating the Chu family's domain flight. If this journey could result in guidance from a master, it would not be in vain. Soon, he discovered the formation's left by Nan Ziying, but he 
had never heard of anyone in the Dragon Kingdom with such advanced formation skills, thus he was even more convinced that a master must be hidden in the northwest. But then he heard a swishing sound from behind, and turning around, he saw it was indeed the alien race. The target was the Steel Slaughterer, number 3578 of the Myriad Clans, whose mission was to assassinate the ancient clan prodigy Chu Xingha. Fortunately, Chu Xingha reacted quickly, dodging with a leap, but the next second another alien beast attacked him. Seeing this, Chu Xingha was instantly alarmed. These two were at least of the supreme strongest class among the aliens, and having just emerged, he was already targeted by these creatures, indicating that they had long been scouting the ancient clan prodigies. The other was the rotting giant corpse, number 1324 of the aliens, who had also detected the presence of a level 10 human ability user prodigy. The order was to eliminate him on the spot. Quickly, the steel slaughterer lunged towards Chu Xingha's head. Chu Xingha slowly extended his hands, brought them together to form a gesture, and shouted, Domain Control. Instantly, a burst of purple energy surged from his hands, enveloping the two alien monsters within a blue domain. Chu Xingha roared, Domain Swords Arise. At the same time, Nan Ziying was also rushing towards the scene, as many things in this lifetime had occurred earlier, and there might be changes concerning the emergence of the ancient clan prodigy. In his previous life, the ancient clan prodigy appeared during the twelfth year of the Myriad Clans, reigniting hope among the defeated humans, which helped humanity struggle to survive for another eight years. This time, the Myriad Clans had started deploying top assassins from last year, lying in ambush to search for the ancient clan prodigy, ready to mercilessly eliminate them upon their emergence. Now, his plans also depended on the ancient clan, so he could not allow them to come to harm so soon. At this moment, Chu Xingha was in fierce battle with the alien slaughterer. Multiple energy scimitars collided with the slaughterer's weapon, but his attacks were quickly overwhelmed by the slaughterer. Chu Xingha spat out blood on the spot, as the foundation of his newly emerged self was not yet stable, and it was somewhat difficult to face two alien powerhouses simultaneously. He was filled with reluctance. Even if he were to die here today, he was determined to take an alien with him. He bit his index finger, intending to use a secret technique to forcibly stimulate his internal potential, but doing so would certainly result in his demise. Just then, a voice suddenly came from behind, get out of the way. Following that, a loud explosion occurred at the scene, and the newcomer was none other than Nan Ziying who had hurried over. Chu Xingha couldn't help but wonder, are you the master I sensed earlier? But Nan Ziying didn't answer, instead, he asked, are you still able to fight? Hearing this, Chu Xingha struggled to stand up, with the elder's help, I can still fight. Thus, Nan Ziying began to strategize, you take the rotting giant corpse from a distance, and I'll take on the steel slaughterer. Remember, they are top assassins, be very careful. The two alien beings also sensed the presence of an unknown level of psychic power, and their orders were to eliminate it on the spot. Nan Ziying then gathered red energy in his right hand, steel slaughterer, long time no see, today you will serve well in my array. With that, he launched a third level fierce spike array, and countless huge spikes burst from the ground, completely encircling the steel slaughterer. Nan Ziying soon realized that a single third level array was ineffective. In that case, he suddenly slapped the ground, and a red array lit up from his body. Stack 50,000 fierce spike arrays, stack 50,000 frost freeze arrays. Instantly, countless black and blue spikes fiercely shot out. Seeing this, the steel slaughterer was shocked, only able to watch as the spikes pierced through his armor. On the other side of the battlefield, Chu Xingha, relying on nimble maneuvers, was drawing the rotting giant corpse, and he too witnessed this impressive scene. This array was several times stronger than any he had seen before, hidden and laid in secret, unknown to others. The battle techniques were also unlike any known to the ancient clans. Who exactly is he, and what is his purpose? The rotting giant corpse suddenly extended its 40-meter-long tongue, and it seemed that Chu Xingha was about to be ensnared, but fortunately, Nan Ziying spoke up in time. The attack of the rotting giant corpse missed, and Chu Xingha instantly vanished with a flash. Turning to Nan Ziying, a sudden violent explosion occurred ahead. It seems the rotting giant corpse is a bit tough to handle. Thus, Nan Ziying immediately switched to the Azura Berserker mode. Seeing this, Chu Xingha was dumbfounded. Could he be the mysterious Azura ranked 10th on the leaderboard? At that moment, Nan Ziying pondered for a while. It's rare to have such a practical combat opportunity. Rather than killing him outright, it might be better to leave him for the prodigy to hone his combat skills. The prodigy has exceptional talent and superior strength. It's just a pity he hasn't fully matured yet. Thinking this, Nan Ziying seemed to realize something, besides setting up arrays in the domain, if it could be structured within a human body. Saying this, he placed his fingertips on Chu Xingha's forehead, and immediately set up a tenfold amplification array. Chu Xingha's face instantly twitched, but Nan Ziying showed no intention of stopping. Instead, he quietly watched as Chu Xingha held his head in pain. At that moment, the system suddenly warned, as the human body cannot withstand an amplification greater than ten times, forced amplification will lead to the amplifier's instant death. Thus, Nan Ziying quickly withdrew the array, and Chu Xingha collapsed to the ground with a 
thud. Although Chu Xingha's capacity to endure the amplification array is limited, ten times was entirely sufficient for his self-preservation. Nan Ziying had intended to use this opportunity to let him practice a marauding giant corpse, but seeing his current state, he decided against it. Nan Ziying tightened his gloves. It seems I have to take care of this myself today. Just then, a buzzing explosion sounded in the sky, and Nan Ziying immediately looked up. Unexpectedly, not only had Chu Xing awoken up, but he also took the opportunity to activate the Chu family's domain control. Chu Xing has shouted angrily, swords arise. Instantly, several purple sword lights stabbed towards the rotting giant corpse. At the same time, the slaughterer broke free from the constraints of the frost array and shot towards Nan Ziying's head. Unexpectedly breaking free so quickly, Nan Ziying immediately activated a fourth level lightning strike array, stacking 50,000 formations. Suddenly, the screen filled with lightning and sword energy burst forth, directly blasting towards the body of the slaughterer and instantly killing him. Meanwhile, Chu Xingha also dealt with the rotting giant corpse. Seeing this, Nan Ziying slowly said, Not bad, your combat strength is quite something now. Hearing this, Chu Xingha quickly knelt down. Thank you, Elder, for saving my life and enlightening me. My Chu family is willing to serve you like loyal servants. As soon as he spoke, Nan Ziying was taken aback. You might want to stand up first before saying all that. But just as Chu Xingha stood up, a sly smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Since the Elder is the mysterious Azura and has been setting up arrays in secret, acting covertly and wearing a mask, you must be plotting something significant in secret. But the time is not yet ripe to reveal it to the world, so you use deception to evade the alien surveillance. It is well known that the current Great Calamity involves resisting the alien races, and setting up the final battlefield here means you intend to make this place the decisive battle site. Upon hearing this, Nan Ziying was startled. Aside from his combat talent, is Chu Xingha's intelligence also so extraordinary? Seeing this, Chu Xingha's expression immediately became serious. Seeing your expression, I think I must have guessed correctly. May I ask if the elder's surname starts with an N? As soon as he finished speaking, Nan Ziying was dumbfounded. Damn, this kid is really perceptive. Chu Xingha continued calmly, considering someone's unusual behavior on the trending list. Combined with their range of actions, it's not hard to deduce. The Azura proves his way through killing, acting much like a slaughter, and the arrays are near the fifth backup defensive line, where that person had just applied for a position recently. Elder, I suppose I don't need to spell it out, do I? Of course. All of this is just my speculation, and if anything is incorrect, please do not blame me. At this point, Nan Ziying was still baffled and asked, are prodigies supposed to be in seclusion before their emergence? How do you know so much? Upon hearing this, Chu Xingha coughed lightly, Elder, you might not know this, but although I was in seclusion, it doesn't mean I was without internet or television. After all, one must keep up with the times. After saying this, Chu Xingha patted his chest firmly, Elder, I, Chu Xingha, am willing to lead the Chu family to support the seventh defensive line. First, it is our clan's duty, and second, it can buy you more time. At this moment, Nan Ziying realized that there still existed such exceptionally clever people in the world, truly a kindred spirit. He patted Chu Xingha's shoulder. Thank you, Xingha. I indeed need a lot of time, but the front line is far more dangerous than here. I hope you can survive and meet up with me. Also, at the seventh defensive line, if you encounter. But before he could finish, Chu Xingha indicated, Elder, no need to say more. As long as one of my Chu family remains alive, we will fight to the end to protect them. Hearing this response, Nan Ziying patted his shoulder again, then suggested to Chu Xingha, Xingha, take me to the Chu family. Before you go to the front line, let me set up an amplification array for you. The next day, the news of Chu Xingha slaying the rotting giant corpse hit the trending searches, and his rank shot up to ninth on the ability user leaderboard. The mysterious formation master who counter-killed the alien assassin ranked eighth, but the most explosive news was that Chu Xingha would lead the entire Chu family to support the seventh defensive line. This news shocked everyone, truly befitting a prodigy from an ancient clan. While others travel by car, or at most by plane to join the military, the Chu family actually flew, a scene only seen in novels before. With a prodigy going into battle, they are sure to drive the alien races back to their homeland. Afterward, Nan Ziying returned to the slaughterhouse, and Chu Xingha said, Elder, I leave my sister in your care, believing she can certainly help you. Seeing this, Nan Ziying looked baffled. Chu Xingha, are you sure you're not just asking me to babysit? This was because Chu Tian looked to be only a few years old. A woman nearby couldn't help but comment, this Nan Ziying really has bad luck, still playing with kids at a time like this. But her words quickly reached Chu Tian's ears, and her gaze turned exceptionally cold. With a flick of her hand, she unleashed a sinister black-purple energy, and the gossiping woman suddenly disappeared, transported directly into a dung pit. Nan Ziying also looked utterly dejected, thinking this must have been Chu Tian's doing. Could she be the same Chu Tian who was ranked 12th on the previous leaderboard? However, having her along really could save a lot of time on the journey. This way, not only could he take over all the slaughterhouse work at the 5th defensive line, but he also wouldn't need to find a cover job for his necromancy anymore.